Welcome to another tutorial by Eldev. Today we'll take a look at setting up our project for Steam multiplayer using the Steam Core Pro plugin. Be sure to check out our previous episodes where we set up and configure the project for multiplayer. Let's begin by creating the widgets that will allow us to create, find, and join multiplayer sessions. In this widget, we're going to create two buttons that allow us to create a new session or find existing sessions. Give the buttons clear names so they're easier to identify and add text that tells the user what each button does. A canvas panel will allow the menu we're creating to cover the entire screen. This might not be ideal for your project, but it's what we'll be using in this example. The vertical box will be used to list all available sessions. Give it a name and expose it as a variable so we can access it in blueprints. Create an on-clicked event for the Create Session button. Add the Create Steam Core Pro Session node to the Blueprint graph and connect it to the event we just created. Let's go back to the Designer tab and create an input field so the player can choose the session name they want. Let's add a border so we can give the menu a background color. Here, I'm adjusting the settings to allow the background to cover the entire screen. Let's go back to the Blueprint Graph tab and continue working on our implementation. Start by getting the text value from the session name input we just created. Add the Open Level node so we can specify which level to load after creating the session. Don't forget to add the Listen parameter to the node, otherwise clients won't be able to connect. That's all we need to do to create a session. Now let's go back to the Designer tab and create an event for the Find Session button. Add the Find Steam Core Pro Sessions node to the Blueprint graph and connect it to the event we just created. Add a for each loop and connect it to the on callback pin. It's important to use the correct output pin from the node. Break the array element so we can access the Steam Session results struct. Now I'm going to copy the break node. This will make it easier to remember the data type we'll be using in the next blueprint. Now let's create the session list widget. This widget will be used to display information about each session when the find sessions button is clicked.
Paste the break in node we copied earlier and remove the unused shadowed nodes that we won't be using. Promote the result to a variable and give it a clear name. Change the variable settings to make it instance editable and expose on spawn. While holding down the control key, click and drag the variable onto the blueprint graph. Let's go back to the designer tab and add a few text fields to display information about the session. Give the text fields a name and expose them as variables to blueprints so we can update their information. In this example, we're going to add session name, player count, and max players. Go back to the Blueprint Graph tab so we can start updating the information in our new text fields. Now that we've set up the widget to handle session information, let's go back to the first widget we created. First, let's make sure we clear any old session information that might be present in the session list widget. Add the create widget node, select the sessions widget we created as the class, and connect the result to the session information input. Add the add child to vertical box node and connect the necessary pins. That's all we need to do inside our widgets for now. Let's go back to the content browser and create a way to display our widget. In this example, we'll be using the game instance to display the widget. It might not be ideal for your project, but it will give you an idea of how it works. Open the game instance blueprint, implement the init event and add a delay node. The delay node gives the engine some time to initialize before creating the widget. It's not ideal, but it's fine for this example. Add the create widget node and select our widget. Add the add to viewport node as well. Remember to select the correct game instance in your project settings. Let's press the play button to check if the widget is created successfully.
In the next tutorial, we'll take a look at testing our matchmaking system by creating, finding, and joining sessions. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. If you need product support, have questions, or would like to suggest new tutorials, feel free to join our Discord server. The link is in the video description.